Hello there, faithful listener. You've tuned in to Season 7 of the Bible Explained Podcast. So make sure to grab your cup of coffee, because today we are going to be discussing the Book of Acts. Howdy there, faithful listeners, and welcome to the Bible Explained Podcast. On Tuesday, we talked about Paul finally getting to Jerusalem, and Paul found out that the Jerusalem Christians really didn't like him because they believed that he was teaching Jews across the ancient world that they should stop following the Old Testament scriptures, basically. And so Paul, in order to teach them otherwise, that Paul is not doing that kind of stuff, he actually goes to the temple with four other men who took out basically an Old Testament type vow. Paul went with them. He purified himself. He, uh, he paid the expenses of those four men that took out the vow at the temple. And so Paul was doing this very publicly to show the, the Jewish Christians in the area that he was not against the Old Testament, if that makes sense. But it doesn't work. And we're going to get into that today. So let's read Acts chapter 21, verses 27 through 36. Make sure to grab your cup of coffee or your cup of tea for you crazy tea drinkers out there. Oh, and, and <laughs> speaking of crazy tea drinkers, I actually, for Valentine's Day, my husband got me a really beautiful gold tea set. And it has like a little, a little teapot and all these little spoons and little teacups and saucers. And it's so cute. And so now I think I have to start liking tea so that I can use that tea set more often because it's adorable. I need to use it more often. So I, I think I'm, I might become a crazy tea drinker. I can, I can see it happening. I'm telling you guys. <laughs> and especially since. Here's another shocking revelation about me recently. I have not been drinking coffee as much. I'm turning into a crazy tea drinker, much to my chagrin. But let's read Acts chapter 21, verses 27 through 36 today. Once again, this is out of the W.E.B. When the seven days were almost completed, the Jews from Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the multitude and laid hands on him, crying out, Men of Israel, help! This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he has also brought Greeks into the temple, and he has defiled this holy place. For they had seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. All the city was moved, and the people ran together. They seized Paul and dragged him out of the temple. Immediately the doors were shut. As they were trying to kill him, news came up to the commanding officer of the regiment that all of Jerusalem was in an uproar. Immediately, he took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. They, when they saw the chief captain and the soldiers, stopped beating Paul. Then the commanding officer came near, arrested him, commanded him to be bound with two chains, and inquired who he was and what he had done. Some shouted one thing and some another among the crowd. When he couldn't find out the truth because of the noise, he commanded him to be brought into the barracks. When he came to the stairs, he was carried by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd. For the multitude of the people followed after, crying out, away with him. So Paul goes into the temple to perform this vow with these four men because he heard about this false narrative that was being spread about him and the gospel in all of Jerusalem. Now, a lot of people think that Paul compromised on his beliefs really badly because he decided to go and fulfill this Nazarite vow. But I don't, I don't believe that personally myself, because as I said on, on Tuesday's episode, it is absolutely not a sin for Christians to go back to the Old Testament law and want to follow certain aspects of the Old Testament law. And granted, every Christian, regardless of what you believe about the Old Testament law, should be following the morality laws of the Old Testament, such as the Ten Commandments. Every single morality law that was in the Old Testament has been repeated in the New Testament as something that you should do. 
So yes, every Christian should be following the, the morality aspects of the Old Testament law. But as far as the individual rules of the Old Testament law, such as, you know, not getting tattoos or keeping the Sabbath day, a Christian can absolutely follow those and they are not sinning at all if they follow those aspects of the law. So if Paul knows that he is not sinning by helping these men fulfill their Nazarite vow at the temple, then I don't see how Paul could possibly have compromised on his faith. He's not compromising on his faith because he's not sinning here by helping these men fulfill their vow. But once again, Paul was willing to become like a Jewish man in order to effectively spread the gospel in more prominent Jewish areas. And Paul was also willing to become like a Gentile man in order to spread the gospel in more Gentile areas. That was just Paul's mindset. And honestly, it should be every Christian's mindset. As long as we're not falling into sin while we're, you know, becoming like another person, then that is what we should be doing in order to effectively preach the gospel to every single person. So Paul goes to the temple. He is just about to help these men fulfill the seven days of this vow that they had taken. And it says when the seven days were almost complete, there were actually some Jews from Asia who saw Paul in the temple. Now we know that the Jews from Asia specifically really hated Paul. They were out to get him. They followed him all over the place to try to kill him. They have the Jews from Asia specifically tried to kill Paul. I want to say two or three different occasions prior to this. This would be like the third or fourth occasion. Now that they're trying to kill Paul and they're following him everywhere. It seems like they're like stalking him. And so these Jews from Asia saw him in the temple. They stirred up the multitude and laid hands on him, crying out, men of Israel, help. Okay, that, that's dramatic, right? <laughs> First and foremost, extremely dramatic statement. But this is what opposition to Christianity does. They, they do their best to make Christianity sounds like something evil. That is what Satan always does. He is the father of lies. And so because Satan hates God and thus hates Christianity and hates Christians, he's going to do everything he can to make Christianity sound evil to the world. That's why there are so many false narratives out there about Christians, that Christians are bigoted and Christians are hateful and Christians are this and Christians are that. But I've met a lot more Christians in my almost 30 years of life. I've met a lot more Christians who are not those things than who are those things. Because Christianity teaches morality and teaches you to be like Jesus. And obviously Jesus was none of those things that Satan likes to claim that Christians are. So this is what these Jewish people from Asia are doing. They're making it seem like Paul's presence is dangerous just because he's there. So they say, men of Israel, help. You know, help is just a dramatic statement. This is the man who teaches all men everywhere against the people and the law and this place. Moreover, he also brought Greeks into the temple and has defiled this holy place. For they had seen Trophimus, the Ephesian, with him in the city, and they supposed that Paul had brought him into the temple. Now, it's pretty clear from the text that Trophimus, one of the men that traveled with Paul, was actually not in the temple at this point in time. And from my understanding, there were areas of the temple that Greeks and Gentiles could be. But there are other places that only Jewish people could go. And clearly, this is a place that only Jewish people could be at. And so these Asian Jewish men are angry because they assume that Trophimus, who they saw traveling along with Paul earlier, they assume that Trophimus is in the temple where he technically wasn't allowed to be. So here's what they're doing so far. They're acting like Paul's presence is dangerous and they are lying about Paul. Once again, they're saying Trophimus is here. No, Trophimus was not in that area. So it says here that the city was moved and the people ran together. They seized Paul, dragged him out of the temple, 
and immediately the doors were shut. They were trying to kill him. It says as they were trying to kill him. So they were probably trying to stone him is what I would imagine and uh, beating him and doing all sorts of terrible things without even knowing the full story, by the way, they just listen to these guys from Asia, tell them what Paul is doing and just assume that they are telling the truth just because they're Jewish people. It is so important to be careful to what you are listening to. And in the age of social media, where we have information coming at us from all directions, it is so important to not just believe every single little thing that you hear. That is why 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 says out of the AMP, test all things carefully so you can recognize what is good and hold firmly to that which is good. Abstain from every form of evil, withdraw and keep away from it. It is so important to test every single thing that you hear so that you don't fall even more into believing untruths. And scripture is the truth. I believe that wholeheartedly, that scripture is the truth. So everything that we hear can be tested with the scriptures. But unfortunately, in Acts 21, the Jews of Jerusalem do not test what is being heard. They just blindly listen to it. They remember all of the, the preconceived notions that they had about Paul already. And so they hear some men from Asia telling them, yeah, you know, Paul does this, this and this and help us. You know, Paul's presence is is dangerous. Get rid of him. They believe it. They're like, yeah, he is absolutely dangerous, even though they had just seen Paul in the temple performing a ceremony with some other Jews. He was following the Old Testament law. It didn't matter to them. They didn't care. They only cared about their preconceived notions. So they're kicking Paul. They're beating Paul. They're probably trying to stone Paul. And immediately this officer who is nearby hears what is happening. They hear this terrible riot that's breaking out in Jerusalem. It says all of Jerusalem was in an uproar. And this was not uncommon, by the way, for this time period. Jerusalem was commonly in an uproar. <laughs> um, but so it says that immediately this this man, this commanding officer, took some soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. So they see that Paul is getting beaten and they force the people to stop. And so it says the commanding officer broke up this riot as best as he could and commanded Paul to be bound with two chains. So Paul is now being treated like a criminal after getting the tar beaten out of him. We don't even know how critical Paul's condition was at this point. We do know that Paul could still talk because he tried to talk a little bit later on in this chapter, as we'll, we'll discuss on Tuesday. But who knows how beaten and broken Paul was after a multitude tries to kill him. But the officer now chains up Paul and is trying to figure out what Paul had done to cause this huge riot. But they're considering Paul a criminal because they didn't know what happened. And Paul, in their mind, had caused a riot. So they they chain him up as the officer is trying to figure out who Paul is. It says some shouted one thing, some shouted another among the crowd. And he couldn't find out the truth because of the noise. He commanded him to be brought into the barracks. I feel like this entire portion actually could be like a really good sermon or something about the problems with like social media. Because <laughs> doesn't this sound sort of modern? Some shouted one thing, some another among the crowd, and he couldn't find out the truth because of the noise. I mean, just nowadays, there's so much noise. Like I said earlier, on this podcast, not to be too cheesy here, but we have so much information coming at us at all sides. It just feels like noise, doesn't it? Like a constant notification is ringing on your phone. You're just able to pick up your phone and learn whatever you want to learn at that very moment. It's just so noisy. Like I feel like my brain sometimes can't turn off, especially if I find myself doom scrolling as I often do. I have such a hard time just like turning my brain off at night because 
it's so there is just so much noise all day and it, because of that noise it's it's hard to determine the truth but not to get too cheesy with that it says when he couldn't find out the truth because of the noise he commanded paul to be brought into the barracks so now he's taking paul into the barracks to try to determine who paul truly is so it says that when he came to the stairs he was carried actually by the soldiers because of the violence of the crowd for the multitude of the people followed after crying out away with him. And I can imagine that Paul at this point in time is now realizing what the spirit meant, the Holy spirit meant when he said to Paul that he was in for a rough time, if he goes into Jerusalem and one of the prophecies from earlier in this chapter has just been fulfilled. Remember the prophecy of the guy that bound his hands and feet with Paul's belt and said that the owner of this belt is going to have his hands bound with chains, basically, that just happened right here. But the crowd is now more than willing to commit the sin of murder by killing Paul because they had a preconceived notion about Paul and they were willing to listen to untruths without checking them first. Well, faithful listeners, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. I hope that you are all blessed and that you check out all the links listed in the description of this podcast episode. I will see you guys all tomorrow for an episode out of 1 Samuel. Happy listening and God bless.